Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Keelene. I'm your host. Today, it's not a podcast. It's a tutorial. So today, I'm going to go through a bit of a tutorial with you on how I knit socks on my circular sock machine. I have an Earl Bacher Gearheart Speedster. Um, it's a new machine. I bought it new last year uh, to make shop samples like the ones you've seen. These socks here. Um, these were knit on my circular sock machine. I did manual finishing for the heels and toes, but I hand cranked these socks from my gradient, um, speckled gradient pairs. So if you've been to my shop lately, you see I have a ton of them up in the shop in the shop right now. So if you're interested in knitting socks or something in the style of this, where it speckles and fades from one color to the next, please go check it out. I'll put the link in the iCard up here for you so you can go. But right now, I am working on a commissioned pair of socks. So one of my lovely customers, Christina, purchased a couple pairs of my speckle gradients. So she got this color, which is the Flu Network, and then she got rainbow color. And she has commissioned me to knit a pair of socks for her. I don't normally commission knits, but I told her I could squeeze her into my schedule, so that is what I'm doing. And I thought I would use this opportunity to show you guys how I prefer to knit my socks on the machine. So this particular sock is knit a one by one rib, which is a hung hem. Here you can see on the inside, I knit 50 rows, hung the hem, so there's 25 rows of ribbing. And then there are 85 rows for the leg and the foot. Uh, I will be cutting in the heel, I think somewhere around here, she wanted short socks, and then putting the toe in here. So this was knit on my machine, and this is what's left over from one of the 50 gram skeins. So I'm going to take you step by step through the process, um, starting with how I prepare the prepare the yarn, how I thread the machine, um, how I use my ribber, and how I knit, hang the hem, and then finish off knitting off of waist yarn. So if you're interested in that, definitely stay tuned. Um, I'll try and put some timestamps below so that if there's a particular thing that you're looking to do, um, then you can just skip right over to it. Uh, for right now, I'm going to talk about how I prepare my yarn. So when I'm knitting on my circular sock machine, I go by the mantra of um, ball twice, knit once. So what I do with my yarn is if I'm balling it off the swift onto my, my um, crank baller, crank baller? What word is that? Um, onto my um, manual ball binder, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for, I ball it off of the swift once and then I center pull the ball and ball it a second time to make a really loose cake. So I'll show you the difference here. Um, this is, these are both 50 grams. Well, this is 50 grams. This is what's left from the sock. And you can see that this cake is the size of a 100 gram cake, but it is because it is wound so incredibly loosely. When I'm hand knitting socks, I prefer to center pull two at a time. When I am hand cranking socks, I prefer to cake my yarn twice into a loose ball and then I outer pull. So for these socks, I'm beginning with the red because um, the customer wanted me to start at the same color for both socks. So both will start at red and then fade down into the yellow 85 rows. And then I'm cutting it off and then I will do the toe and the heel. So I cake twice, knit once. That's my um, preferred method. So now I'm going to show you how to thread the machine and how to set everything up. And I think from here on out, what I'll end up doing is um, do voiceover work. So I will just film myself doing the process and then voiceover after so I don't end up rambling so that this tutorial doesn't end up being an hour long. It probably will be half an hour long. Um, and I will fast forward through the bits where there's no, no need to watch or see, and I will try and get in and zoom in really nice and closely for you on things like timing the ribber, um, also putting the, um, putting the starting bonnet onto the machine and how I hang my weight. So I'm gonna try and get really nice close-up shots for you. I have a really good light in here now. It's a nice bright daylight lamp, so we'll have really good lighting, really consistent lighting, and hopefully we'll have less rambling. So let's get to the rest of the tutorial. 
All right, guys, here we go. We're going to start by loading our waste yarn into our yarn feeding apparatus, so to speak. So I'm going to show you how to do it here. You pull your waste, up, waste yarn up, and then you put it into one of these two eyelet holes. It doesn't matter which one. And you run it along the length of the bar and put it underneath this hook here let me focus and then you put it into the carriage by sliding it into the slot and then you lift your brake and put the yarn under your brake this brake is used for heels and toes the way you can check if your yarn is properly secured there is by pulling up the brake and trying to pull down on the yarn if it doesn't move then you've put it in correctly and you can see here that the yarn goes straight down into the uh, machine I'm using a 60 cylinder machine uh, to make my socks, it's what I prefer. And as you can see here, there are several things to note. One is there's a stopper here for the ribber, so this is really important when you're doing ribbing. This is the yarn feeding carriage where your yarn comes into the machine. And then there are markings along the um, cylinder that are helpful for knowing where to put your heels and toes, the halfway points. Uh, I marked some of them as indicated by my manufacturer. Here's the row counter. I'm going to reset this to zero just so I have a starting point. And we're going to show you here where the tension is set. This is the cam nut. If you turn it up or down, it will change the tension depending on how close or how far it is from this point. So if you turn it and it moves down, then it's going to loosen the tension. And if you turn it and it moves up, it will tighten the tension. And it's really important to know the proper tension for your socks. The next thing here I'm going to show you is how to do the setup on it. So I'm going to use my little tool here. There are a couple of sides, one that's more hooked and one that's more flat. I'm going to use the flat side to put each of these little loops along each of my um, latch hooks. So it's important to make sure that all your latch hooks are open before you begin and you will hang the loops one around every other hook. So you just go along here. I'm going to show you how I do it. I will move my hand out of the way eventually. Here we go. And I'm just putting it there and using a simple motion. I use the flat side because it's easy to slide the um, hook part out, not using the hook side, makes it a lot easier. So here I'm putting them again on every other needle. Okay, now that I've put them on every other needle, I'm going to show you here that some of the needles are currently down. So what we're going to do is start knitting with our waist yarn. I'm going to load it into the carriage here by pulling it through the two holes that are located on the carriage. Some knitting machines, you can slide it in. There's a slot to slide the yarn into the hole, but for me, I have to pull it through. I use the more hooked end of my tool to pull it through and feed it in. I'm going to make sure these are also put on so we don't drop any stitches and I'm going to move the yarn over a couple of hooks to ensure that it catches on to where it needs to be so you can see here's where it feeds in and where I've pushed the yarn over so it knits a few stitches before the yarn carriage I'm pulling down and now I'm going to crank around until some of these needles are up and I can hang the rest of the bonnet Okay, I'm pulling down here and we are going to get cranking. So I'm going to crank all the way around and I'm going to start making some rows and the machine will try and correct itself to catch yarn on every single latch hook, but you may notice that the yarn is doubled over. So if you have two needles sharing one stitch, you pick up one of the needles, 
pass the yarn by it, push it down, and then keep on cranking. Okay, so now that we've cranked about 10 or 15 rows of waste yarn, we can start putting on our sock yarn. So I'm just going to remove the waste yarn by breaking it, pulling it through, and putting it down into the center of the sock. And you can see here, the yarn goes down. Now here's my beautiful rainbow sock yarn that I'm going to put onto my machine. I've loaded it in the same way that I loaded previously and I am putting it in. Now the important thing to note here when you are putting your working yarn in, you want to overlap a couple of stitches to the, if you're looking at it in my direction, to the right. So wherever your waist yarn is, you want to overlap one or two stitches to make sure that you don't drop any of your waist yarn stitches creating an issue for your actual working yarn. So you can see here as I crank along, the yarn gets picked up and knit along with the waist yarn. So for these socks, I'm going to be using my ribber. So I knit one row of plain stockinette. And here's my ribber. I'm going to be placing this on. This is uh, the Erlbacher Gearheart Speedster. So this is what their ribber looks like. The in and out is for the needles to be engaged. And then there are a couple of settings for your tension. You place it into the machine with the arm. And then this is the most important part of the ribber, I think. It is how you set your timing. So there are two screws and a bar. And when you are setting up your ribber, you want to make sure that the needles are properly timed to the right slots. So here I'm going to show you, I will place the ribber into this hole here by pushing down straight down so that the um, ribber gets seated into the machine. Also keeping note of where the stopper arm is so that I can properly time my ribber. The way to tell if it's in the right place is if you pull it to, to the right and it doesn't move, that means it's hitting the stopper and it will stop when it needs to. So you can see here, I'm gonna show you the timing. Here's a needle and another needle and it lines up with the ribber slot and that is really important. So if you find that it's not lining up properly, you can adjust it by adjusting this arm. You can unscrew those screws slightly and push the arm slightly one direction or the other to ensure proper timing. If you don't have proper timing, what will happen is the <clears throat> stitches will drop. And I used to have a lot a lot, a lot of drop stitches. So once I figured this out, it's made ribbing much more pleasurable. So what I'm going to be doing, well, what I'm showing you here is that there's enough space for the fabric to go through, but not too much space. So now I'm going to be putting in the ribber needles. So these are smaller than the cylinder needles. You wanna make sure that the latches freely move before you put them in your machine. I had a few that were very sticky latches. Uh, they open and close just like your traditional um, needle. So now I'm gonna put on my weight. Uh, this is very important to keep your stitches seated. So there's one way to put the belt buckle on, belt buckle, the, um, <clears throat> the weight buckle on that is correct. So I always test it beforehand to make sure that when I'm pulling down on it, it locks into place. Now I'm going to hang my weights. I use the one weight that's on the hook plus another weight when I am using my machine. I find with my tension that is enough to hold my stitches on in place. Uh, if you find you're dropping stitches, you may not have enough weight or you may have too much weight or too much tension. So it's important to check. Now I'm removing my stitches from the cylinder and I'm putting them on the ribber. So I'm making sure that my ribber is pushed all the way over. So I'm removing the correct stitches and putting them in the correct ribber slot. So if you have difficulty, you can always move the cylinder needle slightly so you can get a good hold of the yarn without splitting it. I pull it up and over the head of the needle. I turn the needle down and slide it into place. The ribber needles face upward, the hooks face upward, and you always want to make sure they're open, holding the yarn, and that the 
um, the little knob that's on top is sticking out of the machine. If you try to put it in upside down, it will not fit. So now I'm going to go through on every other and put in a needle. So I'm just feeling with my fingers and I am now picking it up. This can go actually pretty quickly once you get the hang of it. Um, I'm doing this nice and slow so you can see how I am picking it up. Normally this is a two-handed single motion swoop for me. Um, so doing this with the camera right there was a little tough. I didn't want to block your view. So there we go. I've put one in. I pull it up, push out, and then lift the needle out of the cylinder. And now I'm going to do it for the next rubber needle, which is this one. Again, I hook. This is a more accurate representation of how quickly I can do this. It's a one fell swoop. Hook and lift, pull the needle out, and slide the rubber needle in, making sure that the latches are open. So now that I've done some of the rubber needles, I have some that are not accessible. So what I'm going to do is make sure that my rubber is set to the in position, and I'm going to start cranking around, um, and you'll see some of the rubber needles start to pop out that have been placed. I like to take it slow here, going one click at a time to make sure that my needles are popping out appropriately and that all my latches are open as they're going around. Um, this is going to help me access the back part of the machine so I can finish replacing all the needles. So I've cranked around enough to where all of these are now available. Okay, so here we are. I have finished putting on all of my rubber needles. And again, I'm going very slowly to make sure they are all engaging, the, that the needles are all open uh, as they come out. And so I'm gonna show you here a slow-mo, well, as slow as I can go, um, the action for the rubber. So you can see each of the needles comes out in sequence, one, two, three, four. And the yarn is laying across the rubber needle as it opens and the rubber needle catches the yarn as it goes by. So I take ribbing very slowly because I want to avoid any drop stitches. Since I've had trouble with that in the past, I'm still working it out, but for the most part I can rib without dropping too many. And I check to make sure that my counter is all set and then I just rib away. Right, for my sock I do 50 rows of ribbing and then when I'm finished I remove the needles. So I am placing the cylinder needle back into the cylinder and I'm using my thumb to push out the rubber needle. So it's going to be a little tough the first one, but I push it so it moves past the latch and I use the latch mechanism to release the yarn so I'm not fighting with it. So here I am putting another cylinder needle back I push out the rubber needle so the yarn moves past the latch, so it opens up the latch. And then I put it over the cylinder needle and then just pull out the rubber needle. It's very, very quick to remove um, rubbers from the machine. So this goes actually very, very quickly for me. Um, this is the most fun part, I think, of doing the ribbing. I struggled a little with this one. My nails are not very long, so I was having trouble pushing it out. But see, very simple.
All right, here is the last one I'm removing. I forgot to do it the row before, so just popping it out now, no big deal. So now that I've removed all the rubber needles, I can actually take the rubber right off the machine by pulling directly up and off. And you can see here is where I have dropped my uh, stitch. So this dropped right off the rubber, and this is quite easy to fix. So zooming in here, I use one of the latch hooks. Since this is a knit stitch on this side, it's very easy to repair. I am just going to latch up the entire ladder, knitting each and every stitch. So here I use my finger to hold the latch open while I put my needle into the next stitch. And then it's a single motion to pull back and close the latch, pull the yarn through. So again, hold my finger, pick up the stitch, and a single swoop will do. I use my hands here to give myself um, some leverage and to also hold the stitches onto the cylinder while I do this. Well, here we are, we're all on. Now I'm gonna use my finger to make sure all my stitches are seated on the cylinder. I'm going to hang the hem. So I'm going to use this side of my tool to hang the hem of my sock. So I like to do my ribbing and then hang the bottom of the rib to the top of the cylinder so that it closes off the seam and I don't have to do any finishing on the sock. The ribbing is complete. I don't have to cast off the ribbing after I'm finished and it lets it remain extremely flexible when you wear the sock. So I'm pulling up the tube from inside. The weight is off at this point. Um, I had taken the weight off before. And I'm gonna hang each of these loops onto the machine, and you can see why I used a very different color waist yarn, so that it's very easy to see what is the first row of the knitting. So I'm hanging this first row of the knitting one loop on every hook. So making sure I am all set up that the beginning of my round is at the beginning of my needles. I am putting each of the hooks one loop at a time. So you can see here I made a small mistake. I skipped a hook, but that's okay. I ended up putting the extra loop on the last hook anyway, and it's on the inside of the sock, so it does not make a big deal but it's very important that each loop gets each gets picked up each with one hook so that you don't drop any stitches. And the motion I'm using is very soft and fluid. Okay, here you can see that there are only a few needles left before the needles are down into the cylinder. So I'm gonna use my fingers to pinch and hold down the knitting so that it doesn't pop off the needles while I'm placing these. Just so I have a counter pressure. I'll make sure all of the stitches are seated and then I'm going to pull down here onto my bonnet so that the stitches will stay down while I knit. And I'm going to knit far enough so that all of my stitches come up. Uh, you can see here I use my finger to ensure that everything is properly seated as I go so I don't drop any of these little babies. All right here, so now I'm going to continue putting each of the loops onto each of the hooks and 
Again, it's going one at a time and using my hands to hold the stitches down. I'm using that scooping motion and I'm just seating it and letting the stitch drop off and pulling straight down behind the cylinder. It's the easiest way to get the stitches to go onto the hooks. You can see how I'm pushing down with my left hand to really hold the stitches down. I've dropped so many stitches from being sloppy or not taking my time or holding that part of the knitting down. It likes to rise up because you're folding the yarn in on itself. So there's a bit of a bulk underneath those needles. So here's that last one, which is a doubled up stitch, but again, it doesn't matter. Making sure all my, my stitches are seated. I am putting my buckle back on and my weights, just like I did before. And I'm cranking around just as I normally would. So I'm gonna be doing 85 rows. These are short socks for a lady's uh, average sized foot. And here we go. Right, so I've finished my 85 rows and I've put my carriage back into start position. I'm feeding the yarn exactly the way I fed it before, which is right through the loops. I'm using the curly side, the side that's more hooked. And I'm pulling it right through into the yarn um, carriage and putting it down into the sock. And then I'm going to start cranking, but first I'm going to move my yarn over a couple of stitches to ensure I don't drop any of them. All right, so taking this off of the machine was easy. You just can, you break the yarn and continue knitting. Um, here's where I have my hung hem, so I'm going to remove it from the bonnet to show you what it looks like on the inside. I break the yarn. And then I'm going to pull it taut and then break it so that it removes it from the stitches that are inside the, um, the hung hem. So you can see here, it's a closed seam. And it's finished off pretty cleanly on the inside. So we won't have to do any finishing of the sock except weaving in this little end here. Having a little difficulty removing it. Pressure was on, on camera. All right, guys. Yes, I'm in a different shirt. It's the next day, it's the next day. I didn't have time last night. So this is the sock I knit today, and this was the sock I knit last week uh, for commission. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I hope that the audio is good. I'm gonna be putting in a voiceover, so everything that you've heard and seen it was just music and my voice, so it was just me speaking clearly into a microphone. Um, but yeah, everything looks absolutely wonderful with these socks. Um, they knit up beautifully. I think they look wonderful. And again, you saw how I set it up, how I knit it. And because I knit these exactly the same way, with the exact number of rows, with the exact distribution of yarn, um, they come out identical. So. It's just wonderful. I'm really happy with my sock machine. I'm glad that I can share these tutorials with you and I hope for anyone out there who's thinking about getting one or has one and they're not sure how to use it, I hope that you really found this helpful. Um, a lot of sock machine knitting is trial and error, unfortunately. Each machine is different, even if you have the same machine from the same company, if you have a couple of them. Um, each one is a little different, the tension will be a little bit different, so what might work for me might not work for you necessarily um, in terms of tension. But it's just trial and error. If it's too loose, tighten up your cam nut. Uh, if it's too tight, loosen up your cam nut. If you're dropping a lot of stitches, add more weight or loosen your tension a little bit, um, depending on what the actual problem is. Um, this has taken me about a year of solid using the sock machine to get 
to this point where I feel comfortable making socks. I feel comfortable cranking out tubes, using the river to make um, ribbed cuffs. I prefer to finish my socks manually, which is why I showed you this tutorial. I didn't do heels or toes. Um, I'm happy to also do a tutorial for heels and toes on the machine if you'd like to see that. Um, just leave it a comment in a comment below. But I do prefer the afterthought heel and afterthought toe. So what I'll do is I'll pick these up two at a time on my long circular needles and I will knit the toes and cut in the heels when I'm ready. So anyway, uh, that is everything. Again, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do hit the like button. If you're not subscribed and you'd like to be, if you'd like to see more things like this, please hit that subscribe button down below. Um, if you are subscribed and you're not seeing notifications, make sure that that bell icon is hit. It's to send you push notifications anytime I upload new content. Uh, I'm d doing my due diligence, trying my best to get as much uploaded as I can, as often as I can, so, um, and to bring you guys things that you want to see. So. This is the end of the tutorial. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!